Hello world, morning family, welcome to our Sunday House of Talk, thank you for joining us as usual, we are thankful and grateful that we are up and about, grateful that we have the opportunity to learn how to live in this world peacefully, how to understand life, to learn that life was not meant to be lived, to be lived in darkness or in pain or in fear or in uncertainty, that God has descended to us through the truth, through the word, to show us how we have to live, how we are to live in this world. So there is no fear anymore, there is no ignorance, there is no misunderstanding, because the word has come. And we are a blessed generation, we are, we are a blessed people, because we are able to understand that. And of course, because the way it has come, we then want us to, us to contain the way in, their, in themselves. That's why, we, like we always say, that we, our brains were created to, to carry the word, to worship the word. But of course, you, you cannot worship the word unless the word is in you. And when the Word is in you, you become to live a, set, a, a life of certainty, not a life of uncertainty. So the words get in, in you when you stand at the gate. Remember who are the gates? The prophets. The prophets, the, the Elijahs, the, 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 the Jesus, the Pauls, and all the prophets. So you worship the word because the, the, you worship the word because the word is in you, and the word guess in you when you stand at the gate. That's why we always urge you, we bid you by night, bid you by day, to come to this house of talk, because this is the gate. That's where the gates are. The, the prophets, the apostles, we are surrounded by, a, by, by this, this cloud of witnesses. We are at the gate. 
So God dwells in houses. God is the word, and the word does not dwell in the human flesh. Remember, we have, we have labored so much this year to, to give a contrast between the, the flesh and the mind. The human flesh is the human mind, the human brain. So God dwells in houses that are made without hands. We mean that means God does not dwell in the human faculty. He dwells in that part of us which is able to uh, to 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 grasp the wisdom of God, the spiritual part. He doesn't dwell in houses made without hands. He doesn't. He doesn't. God dwells in houses that are made without hands, rather. So it dwells in minds that have accepted the truth, and that's what we're doing. Safety is in you accepting the truth, not just hearing it, accepting it, and implementing it, living it, making it your guide. So the Lord is the truth. That's why you, you cannot call. You, you can't come in this dispensation. Or for six thousand years, we have discovered because the Lord is the truth. If someone comes to you and say they are the Lord or they are the the prophet of God, and yet they are a liar, they are a doubter, they are a thief, they are a fornicator, etc. etc. So that's why you cannot call a liar, an adulterer, a thief, a fornicator the temple of God because God is the truth. How can they be the temple of God when they are exhibiting sin? So those are false prophets. So the litmus paper is very precise and anybody can use it. If one says he is the temple of God, then you will exhibit godliness. So unless the truth captures your mind and consequently your actions, it has to be mind plus action, not just mind. It's not mental comprehension, it's a heartfelt reaction. So unless the truth captures your mind and consequently your actions are truth, you can never be the temple of the truth. It's simple as that. I can't be the temple of truth, you can be. You can only be when your mind, your uh, your mind captures the truth and consequently your actions are truth. That has to happen. To every action there is a reaction. So they say. So in order to create complex communication, even nature shows that. Shows us. And that's why we are in pain and don't understand. Because man is a complex being. So you would want to, to live in reason and in truth. And with the right truth, man can find peace. Because man is a complex being in contrast to, to animals. In order to create a complex communication, you have to have the ability to reason. That's why man was given the mind to reason, to choose. Come, let us reason together. But animals don't have the ability to reason. That's why they are good animal. Someone has coined this word animal to mean a um, as an acronym, animal, animated mal content, short animal, short for animated mal content. Animals have temporal contentment, so to speak. Anim, uh, animated, able to set in motion. Of course, animated means it can move, but it has a limited content. Mal animated mal content, and animated able to set in motion. They don't. They, they don't so. They. they don't don't reap, but man has to sow and reap. Man has to reason. The happiness, peace comes in man if when they're able to use their reason with the word. Is never content unless we give him contentment. An animal is never content unless you give them contentment. But because man, man has failed to reason, we be, now we become like animals. We want to be given contentment. But animals have the innate ability to create their own contentment within themselves. They are so man. Man has the ability to make contentment within himself. But animals have temporal contentment. In that the animal does does not have contentment unless we give it to him. That's why you see us putting them in places like the zoo. The zoo is, is a place of contentment for animals. And human beings want to live like that now because we don't, we have 
we have never understood what we need to do, how we need to behave. So please, let us begin to realize that we are, we are not like animals. Animals are malcontented. They cannot create contentment within themselves. Jeremiah 7, 9 says, Will you still murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal and walk after other gods whom you, whom you know not? See, because, like I said, man can never say that they have the truth, they have got the God in them. If they still they commit adultery, if they swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal, following wrong understanding, wrong knowledge. The word is God. So walk and so if you say walking to other gods, the Bible is saying Jeremiah 7 9, will, will you still murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and bear says unto God and walk after other gods? The word is God. So walk and after other gods is to walk unto other ways. Verse 10, Jeremiah 7 10, and come stand before me in this house. Are you going to? To be evil and still call yourself a child of God, which is God by my name, and say we are delivered to do all these abominations. Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Christ also showed this. Behold, even I have seen it, said the Lord. 12. But go in now unto my place, which which was in Shiloh, where I said my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people. So God is not winking. Is not looking away from wickedness anymore. So, 13, and now because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, I, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not, and I called you, but ye answered not. 14, therefore will I do unto this house which is called by my name, while, while you trust, and unto the place which I gave to you. Unto your fathers as I have done to Shiloh. 15. And I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast all, cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Israel. You notice, uh, we are going through all these troubles because we have not followed the truth. We have not followed the truth. We are not following what the truth is, is bidding us to do. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 4 16, for the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout, with, uh, uh, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So, you notice we mentioned already that the, the Bible is not a book of history, but it's prophecies. So, because we have, uh, we have denied the truth, we have sort of died in the spirit. We have become ignorant. We felt we are lost. Because man was given the power, the ability to fix the earth, to fix himself. Now we are, no, we are in a place where we can't fix ourselves. So that's why we, we, we say, come, let us reason together so that we begin, as human beings, begin to live in a place where we can create our own contentment. I was saying animals are animated malcontent contented. They don't have the ability to create contentment within themselves. They are looking for other people to take care of them, other people to, to bring happiness on them. But now we need to go back to who we are supposed to be originally as human beings. And this is going to happen when we, when we rise up from our death. Remember, we are dead in ignorance. When the Bible is talking about death, it's not talking about the death of the flesh. Because God does not work in the flesh, works, God works in the spirit. Everything is spiritual. But of course the Bible is written in the, in the flesh. So everything we write in the Bible, we explain it using our language, our, our ethnic language. But when the prophet comes, he will come and explain to you what the words mean, what those, uh, the words of parables mean. So when we say we are dead in the Bible, we are saying, we are ignorant. We are dead to the truth. So, first uh, Thessalonians four sixteen has got everything to do with, with resurrecting in the spirit, being enlightened, being awakened to, to the fact that 
we are to learn the earth and grow, learn the earth and fix it because the earth is waiting for us. So first Thessalonians 4 16 says, For the Lord himself shall us descend from heaven with a shout. Remember, God is the word, and the words dwell in scriptures. They dwell in heaven, in scriptures. And they are and these words are descending every day with a shout. Just like I'm speaking to you now. The, the Lord is ascending from heaven with a shout. A shout is, is a voice bringing out the word with the voice of the archangel. Remember, an angel is a messenger, is, is the medium which carries the truth. And with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So those who have died, who are, who are ignorant but they are seeking Christ, who are closer to Christ, shall rise first. So the archangels are ark of the covenant. When the Bible says the archangel, we are talking about the two covenants, where the two covenants meet, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And these, in, this, in these clouds dwell in the, the prophets. They speak to us through, through that. So God, the, the, the shout is going forth every day through the tongue of the prophet. As in also Revelation, God shows us the book of uh, Revelation 11 15. Uh, you will pardon me today, my co host is not with me. She has had a lot of trouble with internet. I think where they are, don't know if the towers are not working, it's because of our trouble with uh, electricity. But she's listening in. I think I can see her, but she's failing to log in. My co host, as uh, you all know, who, who is my wife? Sister Lumbuka, who we minister with these words, is failing to log in, but we will go on. We will catch her next week. So, in uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, and the seventh angel sounded. These, we will, well, one of these days, we're going to have a deep lesson in uh, the book of Revelation, and then you see what the parable of Revelation really is, not like the way you have heard it. So anyway, here we're just picking up a few nuggets to explain how man is going to become innately content when they begin to receive the word which is being given to them by the angels, by the, by the archangels, angels, messengers carrying the word, uh, apostles, prophets, and everyone. So Revelation 11, 15, 17, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven say the kingdom of this world are become the kingdom of our Lord. There's going to come a time that the word of God will be so influential that the word of God coming from the scriptures, from the clouds, will be so influential that you are going to you are not going to tell the difference between the heavens and the earth. Remember, the heavens are the scriptures or the spirit, the, the spirit or the word, then the earth is the flesh. The flesh will be overtaken by the word. Then we will say the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of the of the Lord, of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Verse 16, and the four and twenty elders. He's talking about the four and twenty elders who are found in heaven, in the scriptures, in the clouds. You know, someone was trying to was asking me the other time that uh, what are these 24 elders? Are they people? Uh, is heaven a place where we, one can go and find these elders dressed up and with the four beasts? They are, they are praising the Lord. But remember, God is the word. And the, you can't fathom God like that as, a, as a, something living. We, we talked about this a, a few Sundays ago in the book of Hebrews 11. Paul brought this to light that um, the things which exist were created by things which are which which do not exist and he says and that so that things which exist were not created by things which do appear so if something appears then it's, it's, it's not god if you're saying heaven is a place then it's not a place for god because god cannot appear because anything which appears but the Bible has shown us who God is. God is the Word. God, God is the Word. God is the Word. And the Word became God. 
So, sorry, I was just trying to read some people are typing on the notes. I just want to be cognizant of that. You are all welcome. Please feel free. And now, if you are an open mind, you are free to contact us after the discussion, or you can leave your comment there. The, the, the phone numbers are on top there. So, God is the word. So, I am the, I am the four Revelation 11, 16, and the four and twenty elders will start before God on their seats, fell upon their faces, and worship God. So, who, who are these twenty four elders? Remember, the Bible is the parable. It has got nothing to do with. It has got nothing to do with history. So, what are the twenty four elders? I will show you as we go on. Uh, the 17 saying, we, we give thanks, these, these 24 elders are worshiping, feeling on God, saying, we give, we give thee thanks, O Lord, Almighty, which art and was and are to come, because thou hast given to thee, to, to, thou, thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. 18, and the nations were angry, and, and thy wrath is come. And time of the day that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear their name shall small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. 19. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in, in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightning, and voices, and thunderings, and earthquake, and great uh, hell. I, as I talked to you later earlier, the way the, the Bible is written to explain the language in our story, but it has to be interpreted as a parable. So the 24 elders, these are the 12 major and 12 minor prophets, prophets, worshiping God. Paul says we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. A cloud of witnesses, some of them are in the scriptures. We are, even now, as I speak, I'm speaking from the crowd of witnesses, from the scriptures. The 24 elders are the 12 major plus the 12 minor prophets worshiping God. This Bible is made up of the 12 minor prophets and the 12 major prophets worshiping God. Remember, for those who, who, have, who have, not under, have, have not learned this, when the Bible says they are worshiping God, we are not talking about the religion here. We are talking about reality. We are talking about human knowledge. The way the God, the word of God is supposed to be explained. When the Bible is saying they are worshipping God. Worship has got two words. Word and ship. Just like a ship lives on the water, the word lives in your brains, in your water. Just like a ship is named by the cargo it carries. There is a cargo ship. There's a marine ship. There is a, you name it, medical ship. But your, your brain is supposed to be a word ship. A ship where carrying the word. So the 20, the 24 elders are the 20 major and 20 minor prophets word shipping God. So the Bible says, they fell down and worshiped God. They fell down and worshiped God. You see what, what the prophet does? He's worshiping the word and the and he falls down. He does not take the, the glory. Just like after you, as I come to preach to you, I've never said this word is mine. I've never said I'm great. I must vow and as frail as you are. As long as my choices are wrong, my choices are not choices which follow the truth, I will not understand. I will not be created in a place where I, I, I don't know who I am. So when, they, when, when the Bible says they, they fell down and worshiped, worship, they fell down and worship the Lord. You, you notice we are getting the truth from them, but they are not getting the glory. They are, they are, they are, they are fell down. They say they are, they are not worthy. 24 elders, 20 major and 20 minor prophets worship God. Told they are taught to bear witness before God. When you worship, you speak the word. To follow God is to follow facts. When we say they these followed to the Lord, they followed the facts of God. Uh, Revelation 18, 18, here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding. You see, these are facts. The Bible is talking about 
the joyful elders, even, even, even when the Bible is talking about other things, like for example, in uh, Revelation 13, 18, it's talking about the beast having the, the number 666, six, six, all that, all those are parables which the prophet is supposed to explain. 666 six, six, six is the number of, of a man because man was created on the sixth day. Six is, a, is, is attributed to, to man. So man was given power to rule the world, but he ruled the world quite right, but he took the honor. So man became evil. So six now is synonymous to fallen man. So when the Bible says 666, six, six, the wisdom is. Revelation 13, 18 says, Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. So, and, the, and you notice, a true prophet, a true preacher when he's speaking to you, is always confirming what the, the, the prophets said before him. So when we say six is the number of man, because their prophets say that also, because it is what it is. Revelation 13, 18 says, for it is the number of a man, and this number is six hundred six four and six. Six, six, six. Did you notice? Man has created things in his folly. As we go on to, to go deeper in understanding the book of Revelation, we will invite you on that. But today, I was trying to show you that man has to worship, has to carry the truth, and the truth is not just supposed to be carried, but it has to be coupled with action, with behavior. Because every man, every human being has to be subject to one truth, not the truth of humanity. Yesterday I was I was uh, speaking in our cell group meeting. I was saying that uh, the truth in the world is one. When we say, hear all Israel, the Lord your God is one. We are saying the truth is one. In this world there is only one truth. But it looks as though it's a lot of truth because uh, man has failed to explain it right. Each individual is explaining it in a different way. So it, now it looks like it's a lot of truth. It's not a lot of truth. It's, it's just a lot of misunderstanding. But the truth is one. But in every dispensation, there's a, there is a, a, a prophet. There is someone sent from God who comes now and restructure this truth into oneness. And these, and these prophets are not many. Job says there's always one in a thousand. So, Romans 13, 1, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Wisdom is power. So, when the Bible says, let every soul be subject unto higher powers, stop behaving like Christians. No powers are things flying in the air. It was, no, no, no. Power, powers, Powers that be wisdom is power. Wisdom comes from truth. Remember, they say knowledge is power. So higher power is is the best knower. Let everybody be subjected to the best knower. I was showing the cell group yesterday that we made a mistake and thought God is religion. No, God is humanity. And when we talk about prophets, and I was showing you about uh, the Bible was to talking about angels who, who, who worship the word. Remember, the word of God in humanity is two. It's, 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 it's one, but it, it, it has appeared in two because man could not hold the truth. Man broke it and created his own truth. So we have two. The first word is the knowledge we get from our father and mother when we were born. The human word, the human knowledge. The second word, is the way we begin to understand when we are born again. Born again means that you are born now from the truth. The, when the truth now becomes, when you start to reason in the truth. So these two truths have got their, their own messengers. And remember, these truths were also created by God. God created man and he gave him power or dominion over, over the earth. But man, man, man subdued the earth, but he took the honor. So God had to withdraw the second mind from him. The tree of life was for, forbidden to him. So now these two knowledges also have got, keep, have got messengers transmitting them. That's why we say that uh, the word of God is for humanity, not for religion. If you, if you are seeking solutions from the flesh, you have to get that from the, from the, 
from the prophet who is sent from God to understand the physical things. For example, if you have if you have cancer, you, you listen to the doctor or a nurse to a medical personnel because these are prophets. They are messengers of God in the physical knowledge. That's why we agree with with Moses when he says man will give him dominion over the earth. The human mind has been given dominion over the earth. And the human mind has cataloged the earth. And they have done a good job in learning the earth. Science, physics, everything, farming. So you will be a fool not to learn from that. But but now we have to go further now and acquire the spiritual mind. So, the, so when we talk, we talk about messengers, prophets, pastors, a public health worker is a pastor. In, in the physical a knowledge of understanding understanding how to clean your environment before you bring diseases on yourself. A, a man of God in the spirit, a spiritual, an apostle in the spirit is an apostle from God in the spiritual things. And remember when we say spirit, we're not talking about the religious spirit where they talk about things flying and coming to, to haunt you. They're like, no, no, no. John 6, 63 says the word which I speak they are their spirit and their truth. So the truth that be when 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 when, when we say be subject unto the higher powers, Romans 13, 11, we just read that. Let them so be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So wisdom is is power. Wisdom comes from truth. The truth that be, the knowledge that be. The Bible is wonderfully cared that you need to have the skill and be able to selfless commit, come through it. It's cared that you need to have the skill. And this skill is not given to every human being, it's given to the prophet of the time. So that you are, you are, you are, you are able to selflessly come through it. Second Corinthians 5 verse 5. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. The word that I speak are spirits. Six, therefore we are always confident knowing that whereas we are at home in the body, this body we are in, physical body, is our first home. We are absent from the Lord. It is our first home, meaning the knowledge we are, the knowledge we have, the mind we have. Our first home, when we are born, we are always present in this first mind, but absent from the Lord, absent from the second mind. This mind has to be brought by the word of God, bathing us into a second creature. That's why God says you need to be born again before you experience heaven. So for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body. We want to be absent from the human mind. And to be present with, with the Lord and be present in the spiritual mind. The way we articulate things. We're not going to go to Chicago. We're not going to fornicate. We're not going to, to go with them along in, in their banqueting and riot church behaviors. We are not going to do that. So we're going to be absent in the body and be with the Lord. He says, We are confident, I say, and we need rather to be absent from the Lord and to be present. To be Oh, sorry, let me read that again. Second Corinthians 5 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. This night, wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. So the, the first mind and the second mind must balance for you to be accepted of God. Present with the Lord means what? All the prophets, though dead. In the natural body are present with the son of man all the prophets though dead are present with you when you have the word in you because the word of god is a group of them is a crowd of witnesses so present with the lord all the prophets though dead in the natural body but are present with the son of man they are in the son of man's mind that's why every prophet who comes to you he has to come with all of them in the mind that's why he speaks they are them. He speaks their knowledge. Truth is like math. I was saying truth is one. So truth is like 
mathematics, math. It, it takes math to prove math. It takes truth to prove truth, not lies. That's why a son of man must come who, who, who lives in truth. And when you see his nature, his character, the way he is, the way he preaches, he now magnifies and verifies the truth of God. John 5 to 26, for as the Father had life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself. The truth, life of God is the truth in us. I hope this is making sense, although I might cut this short because we need to, to now go to our physical church. We always come like this every Sunday just to have a, a quick explanation of the truth of what we are discussing in our physical meetings. For family, for those who have been listening to us for a long time and those who have just come today, feel free to be on this platform and if you are looking for a good family church, we are not named, there are no members in our church, we are all family, we are just like your, your family, your red blood family, you are free to, to be part of this church. You can call us on the number up there and you have questions, please feel free to ask us. I know sometimes the online session, we, have, we don't have enough time, but you can call us privately also. But see, I would love to cut this short, pardon me, because we, are, we have to go in our physical church. Lusaka meeting in Charada with uh, Sister and Sofa and the group, and then Mansa, uh, I, I, Amin Manza, Manza who be, was supposed to, to, to start having church right about now, 11. So, in this, on this trajectory, on this truth, please go and think about this. You have questions, you are free to ask. Thank you for joining us. We will see you next Sunday. We love you. God bless you. Bye.